right? How much would you say you spent on these theme pages? Yeah, so I spent tens of, if not hundreds of thousands of dollars on pages like this. So look, for example, you can scroll down there, mm -hmm. you can see the cost right here in the red, and then you'll see the revenue and profit on the right. Every right. single line that you see is a new promo that I did. So the play was, I was doing one promo a day so I can track exactly where did my traffic come from. So I know for one page, I spent $50, made back $2,000. I know it came from this one page. Um, so so that's what, um, that's exactly how we tracked it, how we mm -hmm. did it. Just uh, Yeah. And yeah, no, that's hard. That's hard being able to just keep up with that that data because I'm really big on KPIs, really big on keeping up with metrics. Exactly, exactly. And then what I realized was I was sending these people who send these theme pages all this money. Um, I think peak one year we sent a little over a hundred thousand dollars. I was like, yo, I'm sending these people too much damn money. Let me start my own page. So then that's when I got my own page, and that's when I started really going crazy. <laughs> all right. So now that you said that, this is what the people want to know. What pages are you running behind the scenes? <laughs> I, it might be 10. Like, like get, let's get 25% half of them. Something. Can we get at least like you. a few I, pages? I, I'll, give you, I'll give you my baby right now. Black Wolf. So, Ty, how about them aliens? All right. <laughs> All right. All right. <clears throat> You yeah. welcome to the Digital Brands Podcast, where we interview digital entrepreneurs online, influencers. Damn, we do it again. Hold on. <clears throat> you yeah, welcome to the Digital Brands Podcast, where we interview people with digital brands online, entrepreneurs, influencers, and entertainers. In today's episode, we got my guy behind a bunch of different pages. The the ghost, <laughs> right? We call him Tajun, the theme page goat, right? <laughs> No, I just gave I just made up a nickname, y'all. But yeah, listen, I want you guys to get to know this guy. Um, I've been seeing you down my timeline talking about something I've been familiar with for quite some time. And when you started publicly talking about it, I was like, man, somebody get him off of this platform talking <laughs> about the the sauce. <laughs> talking about the sauce, man. But I, I'm I'm glad you're out here making it more publicly known and sharing it with people and helping people start monetizing social media a little bit better. But I want to know more about who you are what you do, and how you provide value, man. So let the audience know who you are and what you do. Let's get it. I appreciate the introduction. Uh, my name is Tajan Rashar, 22 years old, and I teach people how to build, scale, and grow something called Instagram theme pages. Uh, some people don't know what an Instagram theme page is, but an Instagram theme page is a faceless page that posts specific content for a specific group of people. Um, so think of pages like The Shade Room, Hollywood Unlocked, Spiritual Word, Wealth, Daquan, the list literally goes on. These faceless Instagram pages are literally behind the scenes making millions of dollars off of consumers like us just for consuming their content. Um, and that's ultimately what I do. Hmm. Yeah. Like I said, I, you you exposing, um, I don't even call it exposing, but just notifying us of how to also leverage and, and reach out to these pages. Because a lot of people don't even know that these are just real people behind these pages that can you can reach out to when it's a business. Nah, one hundred percent. That's the that's the thing about it. Before I got into actually owning these pages, mm -hmm. I was the person using these pages. So I'll mm -hmm. go to like a page like Spiritual Word. Back when they used to charge like seven fifty, I'll go to Spiritual Word, mm -hmm. boom, throw them seven fifty. I'll make back like three thousand in twenty four hours. Rinse and repeat the process. I do smaller I'll start off with smaller pages, go to bigger pages, pay them two hundred, make make back like twenty five hundred in twenty four hours, boom, just like that. I was rinse and repeating, rinse and repeating, rinse and repeating. And I got the spreadsheet on my on my phone actually where I was actually doing it, but it, it, it was crazy, man. In today's digital world, iMessage is the go-to for engagement. That's why we created Cell Blue AI, an innovative solution tailored for this platform. Imagine, in just five minutes, businesses can set up an AI assistant on iMessage. This assistant doesn't just chat. It recommends products, books appointments, and solves customer problems. With an easy setup, we expect businesses to flock to our service, creating a steady stream of revenue. For investors, this means one thing, opportunity. Fast setup times lead to more businesses signing up. More signups mean consistent, growing revenue. But it's more than just about money. Sell Blue AI is set to change how businesses talk to customers on iMessage. Here's our plan for Sell Blue AI. Our iMessage tech is ready. Our AI can send messages, attach files, handle voice notes, and more. By the way, I made you a discount code. Just use NoHair100 at checkout when you place your order. Let's keep it our little secret. Now, we're focusing on building a user-friendly dashboard, 
making the setup process even easier. If you're looking for a game-changing investment, let's talk about Cell Blue AI. <laughs> what were you selling? Um, I was selling a $30 mini course, a $30 mini course teaching people how to um, build Shopify stores. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's good. That's good. Um, selling a course early because a lot, and then doing it faceless. Because mm -hmm. were you sending them to your page? Yeah. So the play was, the play was, I was going to these pages saying, hey, how much do you charge for a promo? Going to their page, boom. Um, and then I'll send them a concept that I want to be posted on these pages. Mm. And then I'll say in the caption, I'll be like, follow at Tajon if you want to learn um, how to make money with drop shipping. Or mm. I mean, not drop shipping, how to make money building Shopify stores. Um, and then it'll be like, he has a $30 uh, mini course that he's selling right now, 75% mm. off. Hit the link in his bio. It was printing. So, so let me ask you this. So. You're, you're kind of young. I know it doesn't feel like it. You're probably like, man, I'm old as hell, man. Because I remember when I was 22, what it felt like. But being so young and getting the success that you've had, tell us about how um, going from, you were in high school, obviously. Did you, did you, you didn't go to college or? Uh, yeah, I dropped out during my first semester. Okay, so you dropped out during your first semester. And talk about, like, how did you see this loophole? Like, how did you, what brought you to this point? Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah, that's a good question. So I've always been to entrepreneurship since I was like 15, 16 years old. Okay. Really before that, you know, selling Jolly Ranchers out of my lunchbox in middle school. But okay. um, started a clothing brand when I was like 15 years old. I was making money working at Kroger. And I always knew I wanted to be an entrepreneur. Started a clothing brand, took the little money I got from Kroger, um, dumping into this brand that went absolutely nowhere. And I was like, yo, I got to do something else. Something about me is I never quit. So uh, I was spending money on, obviously, the clothes itself, uh, marketing, things like that. And this is when I found out about influencers. Then I was reaching out to influencers like, yo, would you uh, wear my stuff, X, Y, Z, X, Y, Z. That worked for a little bit, but it really didn't get nowhere. So then this is when I tapped into drop shipping. You probably know what drop shipping is. For those who don't, it's basically where you work with a supplier overseas. Uh, they'll ship your stuff for you. All you have to do is market it and sell it. Got into drop shipping. Keep in mind, I'm like 16 years old at this point. Um, and I started spending money on Facebook ads. So I was taking the money I was getting from my job now, spending it on Facebook ads now for my job shipping store. And I'm talking about, I'm in high school, 16 years old, spend $1,000 on ads a week. Mm. Um, and I was just running it, running it, running it. First three stores failed. My fourth one finally saw success. I think we made $18,000 in like three weeks. Um, keep in mind, by the time I hit like 17 years old, uh, I finally hit like $50,000 in like ad spend or something like that. Mm -hmm. uh, well, most people don't know. I'm not going to sit here and say all these numbers like they're profit. With drop shipping, your profit margins are slim. It is very slim. But to get to my point, how we found theme pages out was I was running these stores. I'm spending all this money, thousands, thousands, thousands on Facebook ads in high school. I'm like, nah, there got to be a better way. So then what I started doing was reaching out to, I found out about Instagram theme pages. I was on like YouTube or something. They're like theme pages. I'm like, what is that? Boom, boom, I realized that you can reach out to these pages, pay them like $100, $200 to get posted on a page with five, six, seven hundred thousand followers. I'm like, yo, this is a, this is a gold mine because mm -hmm. I was realizing like in order for me to reach, let's just say a hundred thousand a hundred thousand people with Facebook ads, mm -hmm. that's minimum costing me ten thousand dollars. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. But with these with these theme pages, I was reaching that many people, if not more, for literally a fraction of that. So then that's when I got into the theme page space. I tested it out with one of my drop shipping stores. And when I tested it out, it worked. Like it worked. And I was like, yo, I'm on to something. And then from there, um, I just continued to do it, continue to do it, continue to do it. And that's how that whole loophole came to be and how I really found out about these pages. Well, I noticed you said uh use the pronoun we. So did you have a team? And if nah. Nah, I okay. Have no time. I just know you, you said yeah, we, so I was yeah, like, no, no, no. I okay. said we a lot, but nah, it, it was me by myself. Okay. Um, I will say this though: when I was sixteen, I was either sixteen or seventeen years old. I invested two thousand dollars into my first ever mentor. I was still in high school. It's kind of crazy when I think mm. about it. Um, and I was trying to do the thing, and I mean, the mentor is a cheat code. Learn from someone who's already where you want to be. Um, yeah. I tried getting my friends onto it, but nobody was really into it for real, for real. So nah, it's just been me this whole time. Okay, dope. So are you like? Uh, you know, excuse my language, but like the leader of the young niggas around you, like, cause you, I mean, you, you getting the money, you 21, 22, you in high school. Are nah, you that's, like, that's funny. That's yeah. funny. Uh, the people around me also get money as well, but I, I will say I'm the leader of getting internet money. Let's put it that way. Okay. Cool. Cool. D does it affect it? Affect the, the results of promo now that no people know it's not as organic as we once thought it was. Like I remember about a year ago, 
every influencer down my timeline was on Hollywood Unlocked, <laughs> right? Promoting their, their courses and their trainings. So now that we know it isn't or is organic because of people like you making it publicly known, does, does it still work? Does it still work? Absolutely, it still works. The thing that made us different from everybody else, and this is why we were seeing the numbers we were seeing, I'm actually trying to find it and pull it up because I hate when people say they, do, they did things and they don't even got receipts to prove it. Mm-hmm. Um, but to, to answer your point, nah, it's not, it, it, will, it will never be washed up. The problem with most people is they think they can get on these pages, post any darn on thing, and it's going to make money. It's going to print sales. It's going to bring the eyes they want to their brand. What makes us different, what makes me different, and what I do, my approach to it, every single time I got an Instagram theme page in 2022, I can count on one hand how many times I wasn't profitable. That's simply because I understand and I know that with marketing, um, this goes back to me being in high school, tapping into Facebook ads and all this stuff. I've always been a marketing, I'm a marketing kind of guy. And I've realized that in order to go crazy with these theme pages, the key to it is this. Make sure you post something that looks organic. So what I'm doing now and bring awareness to this now but what i'm doing now is i'm going to these pages spiritual where hollywood unlock um the shade room all these pages i'm reaching out to them like yo how much for a promo boom now the next thing i'm asking them after they tell me their rates is how much for you to put this in your font give me your logo put it all on there i need to i need to make this look as organic as possible Mm -hmm. that's what makes my approach different than most people people make it look like an ad i make it look like it's i make it look as organic as possible i don't let them put hashtag sponsored hashtag ad in the caption i don't let them do none of that I control the narrative from start to finish, and that's the whole um, that's the whole secret behind it. Well, how, how do you go about reaching out to them? And because they get like a million people reaching out to them, yeah. how do you like get them to actually respond specifically to your like question? You know what I mean? Yeah, that's a good question. So um, I always DM them this eight word phrase: "Hey, how much do you charge for promo?" Because mm-hmm. a lot of times people are DMing these pages, I get hundreds, if not thousands, of DMs a week, and they can't even see your darn request. People saying, "Hey, my name is." Uh, John Billy Bo from down the street, and um, I was interested in promoting my business. They don't care about that. Mm-hmm. Hey, how much do you charge for promo? Because in the if you go to your message request on Instagram, only eight to nine characters show up. They see my whole message without even having to open my thing. So that's one way. Another way is I'm emailing them. Mm-hmm. And then after I get in touch with them, after we do our first transaction, now I'm locking in their phone number. So now I'm not waiting in DMs. Mm, okay. Most oh, likely, oh. it's probably multiple people managing the, the page. Yeah, like you try exactly. to lock in with one person. Exactly. So, like, do you notice you get better deals like with locking in with a person? Yeah. yeah okay. Yeah. You do bulk prices or? Yeah. So, um, what I do is I buy in bulk. So, for example, I'm not gonna say the page name, but we were doing bulk deals where I was getting like a crap ton. Like I'm telling, I'm, I'm sending like ten, fifteen thousand dollars at a time, and they're giving me like twenty posts. Mm. Um, so my pricing is like way better. Uh, way way better and then the real play was um on the side what what we used to do is we'll swing these promos to other people be like yo i'll let you get one of my promos i charge you 200 dollars less than what they charge in market rate because i'm still profiting off the You're back still end. profit on the back end yeah that's good that's good and i know you 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 talked about something like one of my partners he always talks about What's going on, y'all? It's your boy Jacoby, man, and I want to talk to y'all about the elephant in the room. I know you're trying to figure out how to get consistent sales online. I know you want to travel the world while getting payment notifications, but you haven't figured out how to stop working in your business versus working on your business. So listen, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to teach you guys my three-step scaling horizontal method on how I help my clients get consistent sales online. The only thing you should be asking yourself is how do I get started today? So listen, this is what I want you to do. I want you to click the link above. I want you to book a call. When you book a call, we are going to be asking you qualifying questions just to make sure that our synergies match. And if our synergies match, then we can actually foster a relationship and help you change your business impact online, right? So the goal is to take your business from being ashy to classy. So if you're ready to tap in with digital brands so you can get wrapped in, make sure you click the link above. We're ready to help you and your bank account go to the next level. Let's go. We're out. Uh, The receipts... What do you say? Uh, can't give the deets without the receipts, right? So you're talking about the receipts. Now, I don't necessarily care to, to see them, but with receipts, with that being said, how much have you spent on promoting your service, right? How much would you say you spent on these theme pages? Yeah, so I've spent tens of, if not hundreds of thousands of dollars on pages like this. So look, for example, you can scroll down there, mm-hmm. you can see the cost right here in the red, and then you'll see the revenue and profit on the right. Every right. single line that you see is a new promo that I did. So the play was I was doing one promo a day so I can track exactly where did my traffic come from. So I know for one page, I spent $50, made back $2,000. I know it came from this one page. Um, so 
So that's what um that's exactly how we tracked it, how we mm. did it. Just uh yeah. Yeah, no, that's hard. That's hard being able to just keep up with that that data because I'm really big on KPIs, really big on keeping up with metrics. Cause just that alone, that's something that you could sell outside of teaching uh, people how to buy from theme pages to teach people how to track their analytics. Exactly, exactly. And then what I realized was I was sending these people who send these theme pages all this money. Um, I think peak one year we sent a little over a hundred thousand dollars. I was like, yo, I'm sending these people too much damn money. Let me start my own page. So then that's when I got my own page and that's when I started really going crazy. <laughs> all right, so now that you said that, this is what the people wanna know. What pages are you running behind the scenes? <laughs> it might be 10, like, like get, let's get 25%, half of them, something. Can we get at least like you. a few I, pages? I, I, I'll, give you, I'll give you my baby right now, Black Wealth. I'm the person behind Black Wealth. Um, mm. I was also the person behind, I can't say that, cause I signed an NDA. <laughs> um, but it was this page recently that we started in January of this year. Um, we made $140,000 from it from January to June in six months and then we sold it for $110,000. Um, I can tell you the niche, but I can't tell you the page. Um, I'll just follow you behind the scenes. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, yeah. AI, artificial intelligence. That's one of, one of the pages I was getting to. There's a couple of pages I'm actually like building right now as we mm -hmm. speak. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. Mm, that's hard. That's hard. <laughs> uh, AI page, AI page is that because especially when AI was just was still trending, but. I was saying the peak where everybody was talking about it, I can imagine like selling it for, did you have people bidding? Like how did you even let people know that it, that it was for sale? Somebody seeing bidding, it? People come to me. They come to you trying yeah, to buy people it. people come to me trying to buy it because they see like the, the, the moves we were making at this time. We were probably like the second biggest AI page. We could have kept our page and kept going crazy, but I was like, you know what? Let me get in, let me get out. A lot of times we, we, we get too greedy trying to stay in something for too long. AI didn't die down, but AI did slow down. Um, yeah. So. Yeah, another yeah. page too, Christ Endless Grace. It's a Christian page. Um, yeah, it doesn't go crazy. The faith pages, <laughs> uh, pages. Yeah, yeah. The Christian pages. Yeah, yeah, yeah anything the, faith pages. Yeah, mm -hmm. That's how spiritual uh, word spiritual cracked word, it. Cracked yeah. it. Yeah, with mm -hmm. that. So yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's just true. Anybody who who's behind that, you gonna see their pages go up. Well, speaking of um, of that, I know. All right, I'm because he he spoke on his sentiments. I swear, like so, we we were. I was dealing with a client, right? And I'm on IG, and then I see you on there talking about, hey, just do this. And that was literally, like, my strategy for engaging with this client. And I'm like, shit. Like, you oh, no, I remember you sent me. You was like, <laughs> yeah. this before. He was like, yo, it just broke. You give it away to play. Yeah, and, and, then, and then some of your stuff would go viral, and then you would reuse. You wouldn't uh, reinvent the wheel. You kept using the same ad. And then I saw you were doing Facebook, you know, Facebook to IG. And I'm just like, what the fuck? Like, but so, so being that I was feeling like that, um, did you get like DMs or anybody like threats or no, I wouldn't, I wasn't feeling that to that degree. I was just, cause with technology, everything like things change, Yeah, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? You just got to get with it. You yeah. know what I mean? But did people send you DMs or texts like, bro, you giving up the sauce? Uh, 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 like nah, 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 you, nah, nah, nobody nah, got at nah, you nah, with nah. no weird way. Like, or people nothing? will tell me like, like people I know, like, yo, you giving away too much game, but nah, yeah. I would never get to the point where. Um, they felt like that. In fact, what most people actually did was they were coming to me when they wanted to get on these pages, shout out pages. They were mm. coming to me uh, trying to figure out like, yo, uh, a lot of the, the the Atlanta entrepreneurs that you know, there's probably mm. a good chance I was one of the ones behind their promos. Mm. I've helped so many entrepreneurs in this space mm. um, craft viral promos. So any viral promo that you've seen from another entrepreneur in Atlanta, there's a good chance I was probably the one that helped them create it. When you say crafting it, crafting it, are you talking about like crafting the hook, the the background, like actually doing like directing and setting, yeah, the scenery? Yeah, uh, good question. Nah, I, I ain't doing all that, but I helped them create the actual post. So I'll, I'll be like, yo, use this post, use this caption, um, do this, don't do this. Use so, this, do you give them the editor and nah, everything? Nah, I'm not doing all that. So okay. you come to me with your content and mm -hmm. then I'll tell you like, I'll pick from it. I'll be like, yo, use this, Okay. don't use this, use this, boom, now let, let's use this piece of content. Let's get them to put their logo on it. Make this your header, and then put this as your caption. It's gonna work. And print it. Well, how do you how do you go about doing this? Because you're one person, so you obviously like have a team or you outsource or whatever. How do you go about finding the best talent? Um, also, like, so I, I've done like shout out pages before, mm -hmm. and one of the problems were, uh, you know, when you have a there's different apps you can use, but when everybody a bunch of people have access to the back end, so you get DMs. And sometimes you might accidentally open up a DM. You know how it just pops up on your screen? Like, yeah. you'll be doing something totally not with that. And you yeah. accidentally press it. Yeah. Now it says scene. Mm -hmm. And then the person that really owns the page, they can't really see 
the unread messages because you opened it up. Yeah. How do you get a ramp? First of all, that was a long question. How do you go about staffing your people and finding qualified people? And then how do you go about like just keeping everything seamless? In terms of managing my DMs or managing- Just period, all um, that. Yeah, so with business in general. Yeah. So good question. So fun fact, I don't manage none of my DMs or anything like that. So I, I don't see it most of the time. Mm, okay. um, and I'll have one person managing my DMs at a time. And anything that pops up, anything that happens, they're coming to me if they don't already know the immediate answer. But for the people that are running my DMs, they actually have a script that they follow that, that follows my voice. Mm -hmm. um, so they kind of understand and know what to say, what not to say. And they, they have parameters as to who to respond to, who not to respond to. So mm -hmm. if Shaq comes into mm -hmm. my DMs, they're not responding to him. I'm going to respond to him. Mm -hmm. um, but if Billy Bob Joe from down the street come in my DMs, like they're nine times out of ten, they're responding to him. I'm not responding. Okay, so how do you go about choosing these people? And then what is the threshold of they deal with them or you deal with them? Yeah, is it good like, question. Yeah. So the only people that I bring onto my team to manage anything Instagram related is people in the United States. This is where most people mess up. They try to get people from all over the world and around the country mm -hmm. um, uh, in different continents to manage their page. And what I realize is actually, this is this is personal preference, but what I realize is it actually messes up your page and engagement and all that good stuff. Uh, I try to stay away from that. Um, so anybody that manages my page is going to be in the United States or Canada, no ifs, ands, or buts about it. Mm -hmm. And in order to, to get around that, everybody that we bring in is going to be, cause uh, I'm not going to sit here and say that we've had one person running it this whole time. Now, mm -hmm. um, people come and they go, but anybody that we bring in, I don't bring companies into my business. I bring individuals into my business and I make them full time so I can directly, like I know everything that's going on. And as for finding these people, it's just word of mouth. I mean, it's gotten to a point where people mm -hmm. DM me saying, yo, X, Y, and Z, can I manage your Instagram for you? And wow. Yeah. So you don't use Indeed, you don't scrape nah, and reverse? No, 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 no. Okay. I'm on jobs at PH. No, I don't use none of that. I kind of just, I'd rather get inside my network. Uh, some of my mentor always told me is the, some of the best people that you can hire are people that are already bought into whatever it is that you sell and what you do. So most yeah. of the people that are on my team now, um, something that we actually do is we equip them with theme pages if they don't already have one. But most people on my team, they came to me because at one point in time, they were learning from me. Mm -hmm. So th that being said, all right, so you have a theme page, you figure out the, the sauce and everything. How long does it take generally for you to see your first dollar? Yeah, good question. So yeah. it all depends on a niche. It all depends on uh, a lot of moving factors. So fun fact, my first three Instagram theme pages I started, I started from zero. I wasted months and months and months. They completely flopped. But the one that changed was the one that I bought that was already pre-built up. So here's a jump. Anybody that's looking to get into Instagram theme page space, one thing I recommend is if you can go out there and buy an Instagram theme page with less than 50,000 followers. Now, the reason you want to buy an Instagram theme page that has less than 50,000 followers, as opposed to starting it from scratch, is because it already has a little momentum. And the reason we do 50,000 followers and nothing more than that is because the person that's running this page, they haven't made much money with their page yet. So they're more susceptible to accepting whatever offer it is that you give them. Mm -hmm. So a lot of times I'm getting steals for pages that are 50,000 50, followers. Um, I'm, I'm getting crazy steals from right? $2,000, $3,000. Um, so we'll get a page like that. For example, my first page, first page I saw success was a page that I bought. I paid $6,500 for it, had 49,000 followers. I used a 0% interest business credit card for eight months. And then FNBO to be exact, if you want to know the exact card, within three months, we made back our initial investment by month four. I was making $10,000 a month with the page. Hey. And that's because it already had momentum. So my tip of advice is if you're looking against the Instagram theme page space, can you start from scratch? Absolutely. But I recommend that you buy one that already has a little uh, a little bit of motion because it's a lot easier to see success a lot sooner. This is where I sure, messed up. Sure. And that's why it took me 18 months before I really cracked the code with theme pages and owning them. Mm. And, then, and then backtrack a little bit. I, it kind of got away from me. But what was the threshold to discern whether or not you're going to respond to the DM or your staff or you know, your person is going to respond to him. So, um, so it, it, it all depends, once again, on the type of person it is. Billy Bob Joe from down the street, mm -hmm. um, you can respond. But if it's Shaq, um, if it's, before it was, if it was a verified person, but everybody got a verification yeah, mark yeah, now, yeah. so I don't need matter. But now it's, if they have a certain threshold of followers, so let's say over 300,000 followers, I'm going to respond. Okay. Uh, anything below that, I'm just going to let my team handle it. Mm. So two ninety nine goes yeah. to the team. Since so they get the three hundred, they talk to you. Yeah, talk okay. To I, I have a question. When you when you talked about the process of, of buying a page, because I've also experienced that. Also, 
Um, do you have an SOP in place for someone who just heard about how you explained buying a page for 50000 How do they avoid getting potentially scammed by sending someone some money? Like, is it a process? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Good, good, good question. So this is exactly how you buy an Instagram theme page without getting scammed because I've been scammed before and it does not feel good. So the first thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to agree upon a price. So we're reaching out to these pages. Hey, would you be willing to sell your page for the right price? I'm not going to get into negotiation one-on-one, -on -one, but you never say a number first. Let them say a number first. After you guys come to an agreement on a price point, then what you're going to do is you're going to get on escrow.com and you're going to have them fill out an agreement. And this agreement basically states that everything won't be sent over, like their money won't be sent over to them until everything is sent over to you. With escrow, what it does is it actually has a middleman in place. Mm -hmm. So this way you don't have to worry about somebody scamming you because they're not getting their money until they actually, until you have all the assets that you uh, requested. The third thing, this is something that most people overlook, but I'm requesting, it's important to request the original email that was used to create this account. Tajan, mm. Tajan, what do you mean by that? The reason we're requesting the original email that was used to create this account is because if you don't have it, let's say they were to report the page two weeks later as hacked, guess what Instagram's gonna do? Only way they're gonna be able to verify it is by emailing the original person, emailing the original email that was used to create this account. And whoever has access to that is the one that's gonna win in the end. Mm. So we're getting, we're doing all this through escrow with the middleman. And then the second thing, second thing we're doing is we're getting all the credentials, both for the Instagram account itself and for the original email used to create this account. Um, obviously change the passwords, turn on two-factor authorization, then and only then uh, will they receive their money. Mm. Okay, that's good. That's good because I, I I actually had um, a theme page with somebody uh, a few years back, like in like twenty, I say eighteen. I had a uh, page that had nothing but lovely sayings, and coincidentally, coincidentally, the page name was Lovely Sayings, and I let somebody uh, <laughs> buy into um, being my my business partner, mm -hmm. and he ended up selling the page to somebody else, right? Because we were supposed to make money, he ended up selling the page randomly. And um, I just say it was a bad day for him when I caught him outside. But <laughs> I was like devastated because I spent a hefty amount of money for that page. And I just knew it was going to be the new theme because I ran into this guy who was like the originator of theme pages, like from like 2014. Like when yeah. Instagram has been out, what, 2011? Yeah. So he was like, yo, he was telling me a similar story. And I, I want to dive, dwell a little bit more into your story about how he also opted out of college and decided to go fully into the social media, right? And I'm curious, um, even before I get to that question, I'm going to get back to, to, to the Instagram page and I'm going to get to that. But when you talked about your Instagram DMs, right, and people responding and hitting you up, and then you talked about you having an AI page, it made me think, like, why not just automate your DMs with AI? Mm. That was the first question I had, and then I was getting to another question. I don't yeah, automate my DM with AI in yeah. terms of, let's say, people. Let's somebody, somebody's hitting you up. Um, inquiring about promo or yeah, stuff yeah, like yeah. that. Got you, got you, got you, got you, got you. Yeah, so, I mean, you could do that, but I'm against all I'm against all third-party integrations. Mm. You look it up for yourself, but Instagram does not like third-party integrations. As of recently, the only automate, the only integration that's third-party that Instagram has not been like, has been cool is ManyChat. But other mm. than that, this is this is relatively new. But to answer your point, I would never use any automation tool or anything like that because it's a statistic. You can look it up. Instagram was made for people to connect with people, not robots and computers mm -hmm. to connect with people. Whenever Instagram realizes mm -hmm. this, you're going to mm -hmm. realize a drop in engagement. You're going to realize they're not showing your stuff to as many people. Mm -hmm. You can test it out for yourself. Sign up for a website like later.com and schedule your posts on there. I guarantee yeah, you that. Yeah, I've experienced that. Yeah. Damn. Exactly. And yeah. a lot of people feel like, yo, I can create this Instagram theme page. I'm just going to automate it. I'm going to create all the posts on Sunday. I'm going to automate it so they all go out throughout the week. It's not going to work. And yeah, I mean, same thing with the DMs. Um, but we have processes and systems in place in order to uh, mitigate people from DMing us requesting for promo. Mm. Well, that being said, how do you deal with, uh, well, do you have a, like a, a personal relationship with somebody at IG? Because I know, like, so back in the day, I went to this thing called the AUC. Um, Atlanta University Center. So you got Morales, Clark, Spellman. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Shade Room actually was people that went to Clark, believe it or not. And so it started over at Pascal's off of North Side Drive, right? That was like the first meeting. And so I, they were building it up. They were building it up. It was having some success. It's actually new, like some of the founding people. And I remember they went to LA to do something 
and they didn't know that they were like one flag or strike or something away yeah. from having their thing being deleted. Yeah. And it just so happened that they just happened to be in LA at the office and they were able to get that, that conversation. So that being said, moving forward, we see a lot of, a lot of pages get deleted. You have backup mm-hmm. pages and all that. How do you deal with building up a page, putting all this money into it, elbow grease, sweat equity, time, whatever you want to call it, and then having it be secured? Yeah, how do you? You know, that's that's a really good question. I'm at the point in my career and what I do that Mm -hmm. I have a connection for everything related to Instagram. You want anything related to Instagram done? I got a connection for it. So it's like if my page was to get taken down, I can get it back. So for example, that AI page that I sold, right? Mm -hmm. We sold it for one hundred and ten thousand dollars, and literally two months after we sold it, that page got taken down. It got taken down, and like it was even though it has nothing to do with me. I was still able to pull some strings and get that account back, but okay. that account was down for like a month. Like they were not trying to get, it was one of the hardest bands. There's different types of Instagram bands, right? They'll ban you for a plethora of reasons. Um, and this band was, I think it was a, uh, it was something, it was a bad, it was a hard one. It was one of them ones that you cannot get back. Mm. I think it was copyright. Copyright is one of the hardest bands to get back from. Um, mm. But we was able to get it back luckily. But to answer your question, as you start to get more into the space, you'll realize that you can build connections with these people that, that, that work at these places, and that's what I've done. So you can actually call somebody on Instagram. I don't call somebody no, no, I'm, on I'm, Instagram. But, but you have a relationship yeah, with somebody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. And if I don't have the direct relationship with somebody on Instagram, I have a direct relationship with somebody that knows somebody at Instagram. Mm-hmm. And how did that come about? Was that you reaching out, like uh, reverse engineering through LinkedIn, or, or they reached out to you, or how did you? Because it's yeah. hard. Like You could have millions of people on a platform, and those pages, YouTube and IG, still can't get in contact yeah, with nah, anybody 100%. that matters. Believe it or yeah. not, a lot of big Instagram theme pages actually have connections. Like they have, like for example, I was talking to Hollywood a lot, right? a person that's running the promo division for that, uh, the shout out division for that, and she was telling me how their page got taken down before, and how they, they, she had a direct rep or something like that, and she was able to recover it. Um, and that's why they're, they're strict on certain promos that they post in order to stop that from happening again. Mm-hmm. But to answer your point directly, um, as I start to talk to more and more people in this space, all these people that own these pages, I'm talking to people that own pages that make millions of dollars a year. They have millions mm-hmm. of followers. Um, I'm always one text message away to, to get in whatever it is I need done. Mm-hmm. Okay. And so speaking on that, like who, who, su- who surprised who surprised you that reached out for the sauce? Like who's somebody who DM'd you? You was like, what the fuck? Wow. Uh, yeah, good question. Um, it was a few people. It got to a point where I just uh, I just stopped looking at it. But one person was Bobby Schmurter. Um mm. Bobby Schmurter reached out to me. Who else reached out to me? It was somebody in the NBA. I can't remember his name right this second. Um, let me see if I actually come here to my request and I look at it from the top. Because I'll be honest with you. Whenever like people like Bobby Schmurter and I'm like text me, I think I replied to Bobby Schmurter, but most big people that text me, I don't reply. Mm. Um, let me see, let me see, let me see, let me see. Bobby Schmurter was one of them. Another person, I guess my team might have responded to him, but it was, mm. it, it was a few people. So the no reply, because people typically when you say no reply, it makes me think. <laughs> Friends and family usually say when you start making money, you change, right? Yeah. So have you noticed a change in you or a change in people around you amidst your success? Nah, not at all. Nah, I'm still the same person I was before. Um, you, don't answer, you don't answer texts from famous people, man. Nah, so I know nah, Cuzzo ain't getting nah, this. The reason I don't answer texts from famous people, if you have some of these people reaching out for you at mm-hmm. this level, what you realize is 90% of them are just all talk. Mm. And it's just like... It's just like a waste of time. Ninety percent of the time, when I respond to somebody that's famous, I don't know if it's coincidence. I don't know if they're too busy. I don't know if it's somebody from their team, but it's just all talk. They say, "Yo, I want the sauce. Yo, Cuzzo, give me the game. Give me the sauce." And it's like the conversation goes nowhere. So it's like mm-hmm. I don't get happy when somebody famous texts me because I realize that ninety percent of the time it goes nowhere. Mm-hmm. So it's like, uh, I mean, somebody can we respond? Absolutely. Will I respond? Yeah, probably. Mm-hmm. But nine times out of ten, they're not going to respond. So it's like uh, it is what it is. Mm-hmm. Like. All right. So getting into the functionality of the pages and how you build them. So tell the people what SnapTick is and why it's important and what other programs would you recommend people using, like a CapCut, a Canva, blah, did blah, your, blah. You did your research, man. Snap-tick. Oh, that's what we do over here, man. <laughs> that's how we got these bottles, you know? <laughs> yeah. SnapTick, yeah. yeah. So um, 
this is the easiest way to find content for your Instagram theme page. I tell people this all the time. Easiest way to find content for your Instagram theme page is not to make any of the content yourself, but instead to take content that's already been made on the internet. So what we're doing is we're going to TikTok. Once we go to TikTok, we're going to search for whatever it is, whatever niche we're in. So for example, let's say I'm in a food niche. I know you see those food pages where they're making them recipes and good ass plates. Um, let's say I was to have a page that was in a food niche. I'm going to go to Instagram. I'm going to look up delicious um, Caribbean dinner ideas. And I'm going to see somebody that's cooking it. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to click the three dots on the top right. I'm going to click filters, filter it by most liked video. And then I'm going to take that. I'm going to take the link of that video. I'm going to put it into snaptick.com. And then I'm going to paste it. It's going to give me the downloaded version of the video without a watermark. And once I get that, I'm throwing it up on my Instagram theme page. So this way, um, it has no watermark on it. Obviously, I'm going to give credit to whoever it is that owns it. Um, but this way, this is how we're getting content for our Instagram theme pages so we don't have to make any of the content ourselves. Okay. And then um, what are some... So it was a double question. So the other... So I have another question, right? Yeah. So what other uh, software, what technology would you suggest? And also, this is my big question. I've always wondered this. If I'm sourcing content, would you recommend going TikTok or Reddit? Good question. Reddit has some some shit. You good, know? good question. Uh, uh, to answer your first question, um, another tool that I like to use when it comes to sourcing content for Instagram theme pages, and not even just Instagram theme pages, but your competitors, um, is a tool called Page Growth. PageGrowth.io. It basically allows you to put in any of your competitors. You type in their name, and then what it's going to do is going to populate their page, and it's going to show you their most viral posts on their Instagram account. And what I tell people is, if it went viral once, it can go viral twice. So for example, if I put in your name, um, your Instagram username into page growth is going to show me all your most viral videos, all your most viral posts on Instagram, because there's no way to do it now unless you manually go through. And guess what I'm going to do? If I was a direct competitor to you, I'm literally going to see what your best content was. I'm going to recreate it. I'm going to have like the same kind of thing, but I'm having my own spinoff on it because I know that if it can go viral for you, it can go viral for me. Me and you may not know why something went viral, but it did. So why try to, um, so we're trying to replicate that. So that's the answer to the first question. Pagegrowth.io um, is another tool that, that you can use to, to kind of do competitor research. That's more so for Instagram. Snaptick is for TikTok. Um, to answer your, your, your second question was, you said, where is the best place to find content? Yeah. Um, um, Twitter, Twitter, Reddit, Reddit TikTok, or TikTok or Reddit? So it, it all depends. That's a good question. So it all depends on, on the kind of page that you're looking to grow. So for example, for, for one of my pages, Black Wealth, we get a lot of our content, fun fact, we get a, a lot of our content from blog articles and Twitter. Um, but for a page like an AI page, for example, 90% of our content came from TikTok. So it all depends on the niche that you're in. You have to know where your people are. Mm -hmm. So let's say I was in the um, media sector, like the shade room, mm -hmm. they're not going to TikTok for content. They're going to blackenterprise.com. They're going to blacknews.com. They're going to um, uh, blavity.com. They're going to these actual media websites to get ideas for their content. Right. Um, but then if it's a regular page, like a food page, a surfing page, I don't care what it is, they're probably going to go to to, to um, TikTok. But if it's like AI, for example, crypto, AI, Web3, um, there's more people on Twitter. So then you'll go to Twitter for that kind of content. So to answer your point directly, it depends on the kind of content that you're looking for. You have to understand where you can get that information the most, and then you're going to go all in on that one sector. Okay. So that being said, how do you feel about live bites? Live bite? Yeah. What's that? It's an um, IG page. You've probably seen it, but they take the lives. They screen record the lives and then they um, have a page on it. And then so academics, everybody uses that now. Not everybody. Well, yeah, everybody's using that now to like do the reaction videos too. But it's not the full live. Yeah, live you gotta bites. Like, yeah. Because you, you've seen it where people go live and they have like the words <laughs> at the bottom. Ah, <laughs> You just put me on or something. I didn't know this was a thing. Yeah. See, this is a, see, this is a good, this is a good little, a good little idea right here. I'm not gonna lie to you. Yeah. Um, but how do they get this content? Easy. They probably just go to YouTube, and what they realize is YouTube, you'll find a lot of stuff. And on YouTube, you'll realize a lot of people clip this stuff and they post it on YouTube. Mm -hmm. So, for example, if something's going crazy right now, I'm gonna go to YouTube. I'm gonna see if it's there, and I'm gonna take it here. So, for example. Um, King Vaughn, like as of recently, I realized I've been seeing it a lot on YouTube. People were releasing clips of him. Um, people were releasing like jail footage of him because they requested all the documents. That's public knowledge. You can request information like that. 
people who are requesting these clips that you can't even get from anywhere unless you go to a direct website, you know people. And what they were doing is they was posting it all over YouTube. And what people were doing was they was getting these clips off of YouTube, posting on their theme page. So to answer your question directly or for a page like Live Bytes, I guarantee you that they probably get 90% of their content from YouTube. 90%. Okay. Mm. Because how else are you going to get something that was live and recorded? Somebody had to be there in that moment. You're not going to well, be able you to... Can, yeah. Or you can set your notifications and just nerd out and set up yeah, the crib Yeah, you can set your day. notifications, but you're going to yeah. set your notifications for a million famous people? Yeah. I actually did it. So I actually, <laughs> I actually did it. You know, you miss out on life, but I just wanted to know because I respect your authority in this yeah, field. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. I didn't know if you were familiar with the page, so I yeah. wanted to see like how you felt about it. If I, was, if I was me, though, I'm, yeah. not, I'm not about to do that. There's people that do that. There's people that's going to do that for you. Just academics probably sit there and have a team that do that for him. Like, I'll just go ahead and find somebody that already dropped a clip on YouTube. Mm -hmm. Cool. Mm -hmm. Question for you. So um, as you create these theme pages and you and you talk about taking inspiration from other pages or, you know, whether it's a TikTok, whether it's a it's a it's um, uh, another Instagram page and, and recreating and putting your own spin on that, right? Um, what if one of these entrepreneurs right now seems buddy buddy and they just all of a sudden Cat Williams you, right? And next thing you know, <laughs> somebody's out there telling, look, Tajon, he's just out here stealing everything. He stole, he stole my idea for this theme page and you just woke up and they were just crucifying. How would you feel if you seen it down your timeline? Yeah, it's all part of the game. I charge it to the game. I, I just take it on the chin and I keep on pushing it because I realize that in this game, in my years of running pages like this and running, managing dozens of pages, that's what people do. They just take content. It's like, we don't own it, so who am I to bicker and, and get mad at you about it? It's just all a part of the game. I know people that I'm close with to this day that own big theme pages as well, and they, whenever they see something going viral on my page, they swipe it. Like They just post on theirs. Because at the end of the day, if it went viral once, it can go viral twice. We all understand this, and we all know this. I'm not going to get like mad or petty or anything like that. Most people in this space, they realize, like, that's what it's all about. Mm. Think about big news media um, people like ABC, uh, ABC News. I don't even watch the news, but WSB TV, ABC mm. News, bro, they try to figure out, they try to find out the biggest stories happening in the city, mm. and they're all shooting over there. For example, there's probably mad news articles covering a Young Thug Rico case right now yeah. because they understand that they, can, they yeah. can benefit off of the virality of the case. So it's the same thing. We know that if it went viral for them, it can go viral for us. It's no, to me personally, have there no been smoke. people? Have there been people that, that that took my stuff? Yeah, but did I say something to them? Did I press them? Yeah, but yeah, I, realized, <laughs> <laughs> I thought you. <laughs> but I, but, I, but I realized that I'm at the point where it's like it's gonna happen. Like for yeah. example, when we switched from Black Wealth Crew to Black Wealth, the second I got my name switched from Black Wealth Crew to Black Wealth, somebody went and copied exactly what I did with Black Wealth Crew. Keep in mind, Black Wealth Crew, well now Black Wealth was a page that made, was making $10,000 a month just in paid promos. Mm -hmm. People saw what was working, people saw what I was doing, and they just bid it. And to answer one of your points earlier, Tajon, why don't you reveal all the pages you run and own? That, for that exact reason, yeah. people bite it, people steal it. And yeah. let me be crystal clear, there's billions of people that, that use Instagram, so I don't believe in competition too much, but I do know when something's printing, when something's working, you're not gonna give them the, the, the formula to a Krabby Patty. Yeah, you know what sure. I mean? You can mm. create your own, but you're gonna have to figure it out for yourself. Mm. Sure. So, mm. so speaking about virility going viral, so you went on a million dollars worth of game. Talk about the significance of that appearance, how it affected your bottom line, and was it worth going there? You know what I mean? Just give me the full rundown. Yeah, man. A million dollars worth of game. Um, yeah, it was definitely worth it. Um, million dollars worth of game was one of probably my favorite podcasts I've been on. Mm -hmm. um, simply because their platform is insane. They have yeah. millions of like that. It got millions of people watching it. I got freaking millions, like millions of views off just the clips yeah. uh, being surfaced and ran everywhere. So it, it definitely amplified everything I have going on. And it brought more attention to the Instagram theme page space, which I was most excited about. Mm. Um, but a million dollars worth of game was it was one for the books. That's one of my favorite podcasts I've mm. ever been on. All right. So who, 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 all right. So you got David Omari mm -hmm. and then we got you. All right. So like, what's going on here? <laughs> are, are you but guys going to join but forces? He does, he does the, are, he does the, David does the, the YouTube faces yeah. and you do the IG face. Oh, they need to join forces. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Fun fact, fun fact. Yeah. Um, one of my Instagram theme pages, what we actually did was the hardest thing with YouTube and scaling a YouTube channel is getting people to see this new channel. 
it's so much easier to grow a page on Instagram than it is to grow a channel on YouTube. So what we did was we were growing our page crazy fast, going viral left and right on our Instagram theme page. So then we made a YouTube automation channel with this same brand and we grew it just like that. So they work hand in hand, YouTube automation mm. and um, Instagram theme pages because it's both faceless. You don't know who's behind it. Um, they, they work hand in hand. But what I like to say is Instagram theme pages is the fastest way to grow a YouTube automation channel yeah. because you already have people coming to your page. On one of my pages right now, we have millions of people coming to our page every single week. So it's like, hey, let me swap out the link in the bio for my YouTube automation channel as it relates to the same exact brand. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to bring over um, subscribers. So that's actually one of the um, ways that we monetize one of our Instagram theme pages okay. with YouTube automation channel. So y'all already been, y'all know y'all been locked yeah, in, yeah, Voltron. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good, okay. good, 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 good. Cool, cool. So I'm pretty, I think how a theme page works is pretty self-explanatory. You have a post, you get paid for it. It's $100, $500, whatever. Maybe you know how much money you're making. There's a lot of confusion in the YouTube world as far as getting paid from the platform. Mm -hmm. Um, and you, you have a YouTube channel also. I remember I seen on a video and you talked about, Hey, if you don't purchase my, my stuff right now, if you click my video, I still get paid. How do you define how you get paid on YouTube? Because I'm confused, right? Yeah. How does it work? Like, is it, you get paid X amount of dollars for a million views for a hundred thousand views or yeah. how like on YouTube or on Instagram? YouTube, YouTube on YouTube. Yeah. So you get paid for the views. Once your channel is monetized, you get paid off of the views. And, mm -hmm. um, so for example, um, there, there's a new threshold now. I believe it's only a thousand subscribers, like 500 watch hours or something mm -hmm. like that. But once you get that, then you get paid off of views. The difference between YouTube and Instagram is YouTube actually pays you. YouTube, the platform pays you, but mm -hmm. with Instagram, Instagram, the platform mm -hmm. doesn't pay you. I tell people mm -hmm. this all the time. That's where people get confused. Instagram, mm -hmm. if you're trying to make your money from Instagram, from Mark Zuckerberg, you can kiss that goodbye. You might as well go get a job because they're not going to give you jack squat. Mm -hmm. But what we are going to do is we're going to make money off the people that are on the Instagram platform. Mm -hmm. And with YouTube, it's the same thing. Well, YouTube is a little bit different. Um, you're going to pay from the views once you actually get to that level. And mm -hmm. then obviously, um, whatever call to actions you make, whatever it is that you decide to sell. Mm -hmm. um, oh, yeah, yeah. Because you still have your offer. So I was just wondering, was it like a one size fits all? If I reach 100,000 views, that means I made $4,000 on this video. If I... If I um, have a million views, that means I made $10,000 yeah, on this video. Yeah. But I, I never, no one can ever really explain that to me because I guess there's so many variables and you may even know more information on that. I'm always confused on that. Oh, you want me to speak to it? Yeah, speak to it. Oh, okay, so it all depends on what niche you're in. Um, it depends on a lot of things like your watch time. It depends on if that content is replicated like in the AI. So say you put up a, a live of uh, King Von, right? Yeah. So if there's five other channels that have King Von, um, years ago, it's not gonna matter so much, but now it's like first come, it's gonna hit the hardest, you know what I'm saying? But you can get around that if you have a bigger subscriber base or a bigger engagement on your channel. Um, but everything is different. So like financial literacy, uh, stuff like that always hits more. So like mm -hmm. a financial literacy video that's 10K, it's going to be like, I'm just making stuff up. It's going to make you the same amount of money, a similar amount of money as a, a repost of a King Von Live that's yeah. well done that's at like 70K. Mm. It, it, it's so There's no cookie cutter. And then also sometimes you may put something up and no matter what you do, like you can kind of, pre, you, you, you know this, you could preview it and it can show whether or not it's limited or not. Okay. And then um, sometimes you post something and it's green and then you look a week later and it's limited. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So it's really, and then the algorithm is always changing. It's like literally like a brain. And it just, um, uh, remember X-Men when you would fight the, the, the guys, like they would learn your superpower mm -hmm. after a while. Mm -hmm. That's kind of what the AI does. Like it learns based off of your activity. And then it upgrades and upgrades and upgrades and stuff. Of course, there's a human element. So to answer your question, I'm not answering the question because... <laughs> There's no real no, cookie cutter way. Out, you know what I'm saying? You can you can even put up a video that does that gets a million views and fuck around and only get like 200 subscribers off that. You know what I'm saying? You could put up a video that gets 10k views as you've seen with your channel mm -hmm. and then just get 13k subs. You feel me? True. So it's it's so many different variables. It depends on like what part of the country you're in, uh, what country you're in. It's just so much stuff, man. If somebody knew it, then they would just be out of here, you know, mm. but um, mm. yeah. Not okay. to get long-winded, because no. I could talk forever, but it's no. not my interview, it's your interview. <laughs> yeah. 
So with that being said, uh, Tajan, you gave a lot of valuable information uh, just in this 45 minutes to an hour that we've been speaking. Is it something more that somebody could tap into if they wanted to learn a little bit more about this process? Like, how do, how do people get more in tune to learn more about this whole theme page thing? Yeah, so every single week I have uh, free trainings where we actually break it down step by step. Um, a lot of people actually come to me and say, yo, Tajan, your free stuff is better than most people's pay stuff. Because I literally break it down so a kindergarten can understand how to start a page, the best kind of page to start, how to find content, how to create your team so you don't have to do anything, or you can do it yourself, mm. um, and how to make money from it. So, for example, um, we didn't touch base on this, but most people always ask me, Tajan, how do you make money from Instagram? And I tell people this all the time. There's five different ways that you can make money from Instagram. There's really hundreds, but the five different ways that you can make money from Instagram is, one, selling some sort of digital product or physical product. I ask people this all the time. If I had an Instagram theme page that was all about weight loss and I had 100,000 people follow me and they're all interested in losing weight, do you think it would be hard to sell a $20 ebook teaching you how to lose 100 pounds in 100 days? Mm -hmm. No, it won't be because this is an audience of people that want this ebook. The second way to make money from pages like this is affiliate marketing. Then you have sponsorships. If you go to the shade room right now, you're going to see Fashion Nova posted on their page at least three times today, guaranteed. That's a sponsorship that they have with the shade room. That's a multi-million dollar sponsorship deal right there. Fourth way is building your page to sell it. And then the fifth way is um, actually selling promos and shout outs. And there's even more ways to make money from Instagram theme pages, but those are just a few um, that you're going to learn on the training. Mm. And and you touched on a key a keyword uh, a few times, which was like mentorship. Would you would you recommend someone who's torn between jumping in and going into college or tapping into the Tajon mentorship? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, to each his own, right? Just because Instagram theme pages works for me, just being completely honest, doesn't mean it's going to work for you. I recommend you come to the free training and see if this is something that you actually want. And if it is, and you know where you need to be, because the fastest way to get to where you're trying to go is learn from someone who's already at where you want to be. So if that's the case, if you want to go the Tajon route, um, after my first semester in college, I gave it a shot and I say, you know what? Screw this. I'm going to drop out. I hate saying that drop out word, but I'm going a, I'm to a back out and I'm going to see what it's like if I don't have college. If it don't work out, guess what? I still got a roof over my head, clothes on my body, food on the table regardless. So I'm just going to see how it is. And I mean, we see how it turned out. I didn't go back, but yeah, um, yeah it, it just all depends on the person. Yeah. But if the person's interested in it, then definitely come. come you didn't have that mindset, like, what if it didn't work? Like, just yeah. Uh, of course, I think what if it didn't work? But I try not to think about that because it's, it has to work or it has to work. It's just something I live by. Um, I always put myself in uncomfortable positions in order to grow. So, for example, when I moved out of the house at I think I was nineteen years old, like. I knew, always knew how to make money. Making money wasn't the problem. It was my drive. It was staying hungry. So I forced myself to get out the house. I moved out. I knew how to make money. Keep in mind, I was an entrepreneur. I wasn't working a job or anything like that. But it forced me to get in this mode of like, all right, come on. You need to keep going. You need to keep going. You need to keep going. But the thing is, it was been months where I was like, yo, I don't even know how I'm about to get rent. But it's like, I still find a way because it has to work or it has to work. And that's just something that I live by. Mm. Do, do you think that you'll ever, you know, go back to college or think, you know, just for kicks or, cause a lot of people do that. Like a lot of people are super successful. He's looking, he's laughing like, hell nah. But a lot of people now they, they reach like 30, 34 or something like that. NFL players, comedians, you know, famous people. Yeah. And they're like, man, like J.R. Smith or somebody, man, I just missed that college experience. I want to go back. Do you think you'll ever get that bug or, well, yeah. first of all, where were you going to college at? That you uh, Georgia Perimeter. It's like Georgia okay. State's Perimeter School. Cause yeah, my yeah. GPA wasn't good enough. Okay. Do you think you'll ever like tap in at Georgia Tech? Because you, uh, you're gonna have the bag, you got it, and you're just gonna get yeah, bigger and bigger. I mean, so like, I, I can't say where I, what I'm gonna feel like doing. You know, 10, 15, 20 years down line. Yeah. But what I can say is, I never liked school. Like I've, I was just always okay. been lackadaisical with it. Like yeah. uh, I was in college. Was it pre COVID? I think I was in college right when, right before COVID happened, yeah. or right when it happened, and like. Everything was laid out for me. I could have cheated on everything if I really wanted to. I just did not feel like doing the work. So knowing that yeah. I hate school, I hate applying myself to this, I hate giving energy to anything school related, I probably won't, but I can't speak for the future. Hmm. Are you?